Hello again, and welcome back to Casual Reviews. Apparently, there's rumors going around about the possibility of there not being a global version for the Xiaomi 17 Pro Max, which I would say seems like a strange strategic decision for Xiaomi to make. But here we are, and in case you're still interested in this phone, then today I'm going to be showing you how you can set up this phone for global use and to see whether or not this phone, being a Chinese version, will be suitable for you. All right, let's get started with it. Now, I've already set up my unit right here, but there isn't much to tell really with the uh, initial process of setting up the phone when you uh, initially boot up the phone. So um, basically there's just the, um, the option to set up a language for your phone and then whether or not you want to move over from a different phone or you want to set up, um, basically start from scratch. Um, now in, ter in terms of languages, unfortunately, you don't get a lot of options. This is basically the list of all the languages that you get with it. But if you're fine with English, then we don't have a problem here. Now, if the other phone that you're moving from already has Google stuff on it, then the option to enable Google Play services that's going to be right here under accounts and sync, this will already have been enabled after the initial boot up. But in case it doesn't happen, then I'm going to show it to you. It's, it's right here. Um, this is basically the first thing that you're going to have to do after booting up the phone. You're going to have to enable this to uh, basically enable background support for all, um, all of the uh, major Google services. Once you do this, the second thing you're going to have to do is to open up Xiaomi's app store called Get Apps. And then you're going to have to Google Play Store. Um, not our Play. I think you're going to have to enter it all the way. Yeah. Once you do this, you will see it right here. It says Google Play Store. Now, I've already done this. That's why it only says open. But if you haven't done this already, it'll say um, update. And then when you do it, basically all it does is update it, update the uh, Google Play Store to the latest version and enable it, which is the uh, most important thing. So it enables the Google Play Store. Um, and I have it right here. It's a system app. You don't have to do anything extra. I think we're past that, but I'm, I'm going to talk a little about it just in case some people are not familiar enough with Chinese ROMs by now. But yeah, this is it. It's running as a system app. I have it. I can look stuff up. And then it's um, working like any other Play Store on any other Android phone. And then once you do that, of course, you're going to have to head over to the Play Store and just download and install all your apps normally as you would. And as you can see, I've already done that. I have everything up and running. I do not have problems with any of these apps, um, all the uh, global apps that I've been using on my global S25 Ultra are up and running here without an issue. The next thing that you're going to have to do is, of course, fix notifications because uh, with Chinese ROMs, there's a uh, battery saving policy in place with almost all Chinese ROMs that I can think of. Um, so they kill the background processes for all these apps that they do not recognize. And that obviously includes all the uh, global apps that we use, such as Telegram, WhatsApp and all the other global messaging apps. And then essentially what you're going to have to do for every one of them is head over to App Info, enable Auto Start disable battery restrictions, put it on no restrictions. It's going to be um, on battery saver by default, probably most of the time. Um, yeah, you're going to remove those restrictions and then you're going to have to move over to permissions, other permissions, and basically enable all these um, as per requirements. Of course, I don't recommend just turning everything on um, if you don't need them. But um, what matters essentially is this display pop-up windows and then show on lock screen, open new windows while running in the background. Um, these three or four home screen shortcuts as well, just in case. I believe these four are the most important ones that you're going to have to keep enabled all the time for those apps that you want timely notifications for. And then that's it. You are now set to receive all of your notifications for your messaging apps in time. And of course, obviously it goes without saying that you have to have notifications enabled. Next up, we got Circle to Search. Now, there's an app for this. Some of you are probably already familiar with it, but some of you are not. So it's called Me CTS. It's not going to be on the Play Store. You're going to have to Google it and download it elsewhere. And essentially what this app does is trigger Google's circle to search if it's already included in your ROM, um, which it is with um, Xiaomi's HyperOS. And once you open the app, then obviously you're, you're in the um, circle to search UI and you can use it as normal. Now, what we want for obvious reasons is to be able to pop up me CTS from any screen and on any app, we can't just minimize everything. And to do that, first of all, me CTS already comes with a uh, control center widget. It's going to be right here. So you can have this in your control center and then on any app, you can just 
you know, just swipe down and then tap to do a circle to search. But then that's not quite it for me. It just doesn't cut it. Now, there's a few options for you here. Number one for me personally is going to be this app right here. It's called Edge Gestures. Now, this is a paid app. Um, it's going to cost you approximately somewhere between a dollar and a dollar ninety nine, depending on the region of your Play Store. But um, it's a very useful app. It lets you set up customized gestures around your screen. Well, except the top. But like, um, it's some sort of a bar thingy that you can have one of on the left and another on the right and one on the bottom. Or just one of them, which is what I've done. I have one right here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video because I've... Um, like my settings um, are, are making it quite transparent almost. But um, basically, you can have one. You can adjust it however you like. You can make it thicker. You know what? I'm just going to quickly reduce the transparency so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's right here. It looks like a scroll bar. But um, you can adjust it. You can make it thicker, thinner, or longer, or shorter. Um, it's completely customizable. And what it does is... It lets you set up all these gestures so you can make it tap to do whatever. There's a wide range of things that it lets you do. You can even set it to open apps. And for me, I'm only using three of them. The first one is obviously swipe to back because I don't want to mess with that. I want to still be able to move to the previous screen um, using whichever part of the left side of the screen as usual. Second thing is swipe down. I've set it to pop up me CTS. Now this is what I was talking about earlier. So on any app, and on any screen, I can just do this to get circle to search, which is very convenient. Now, of course, you can make it all the way transparent so there's nothing there if you're uncomfortable with it. Or you can do it my way, which is basically to leave a little bit of it just in case you forget where it was. Or if you're, you know, sloppy with your gestures, you can make it really thick and transparent because obviously you don't want to mess with the content on your screen. Um, and then set up some sort of a diagonal gesture if you want. And of course, you can have this on the right side of your screen instead if you're more comfortable with that. Or on the bottom, um, though I do not recommend this one because if, if you um, set swipe up to recent apps, then you're not going to get the default animation. It, it just it looks rough and abrupt. I don't recommend this one. And then once you're done with all of this, the most important thing for you to do is enable auto start and disable battery restrictions because you want to have it running at all times. And don't forget to do this for me CTS as well to... Uh, basically have it enabled in the background as well. But let me just point out this really, really important thing right here if you don't already have the Google app. So you're going to have to install this if you don't already have it. This is basically what you need to be able to access um, Circle to Search in the first place. And of course, you're going to have to give it all those background permissions as well, same as the other apps. And then there's another thing that you have to do, um, and that's to head over to Settings and then Apps and then Other Settings. And you're going to have to go to default apps and then assist and voice input. And then you're going to have to set your default digital assistant app as Google. Because by default, it's going to be on either none or Xiaomi's hyper Xiaomi AI. If you don't have it set to Google, you're not going to be able to access circle to search. But once you've done all of this, then you have nothing to worry about. Even if you reboot your phone, you do not have to open any of these apps manually. Now, add gestures is the best way to do it, in my opinion, but then again, it's paid. So if you're not looking to pay for anything, there's another alternative for you. And that's another app called Button Mapper. Now, this one's pretty self-explanatory as well. It lets you remap your buttons, but the downside to it being that you cannot remap the power button, and you don't have another button on the 17 Pro Max, apart from the volume rockers. So the way to do it is fiddle around with one of those however you like it, and the way I've done it is... Um, to double tap the volume down button, once you double press, it pops up circle to search. This is quite convenient as well. Um, one more thing to note, however, is to make sure this, this volume panel bypass right here is enabled because basically what this does is that it attempts to prevent interfering with adjusting your volume. So once you have the, uh, the panel open right here, even if you double press, nothing happens. And this is quite useful, of course, because it may happen. And of course, you need to have all those background permissions enabled for this as well, including auto start and no battery restrictions. The next thing to do is to set up Gemini. If you use it, of course, you don't absolutely need to do any of this. I'm just trying to make it easier for you. And the way I'm doing it is to is a swipe up on a gesture that I have right here, and then I'm um, on Gemini, and then I'm able to do everything that I'm able to do using a global phone. And again, if you're not looking to pay anything, then of course you can still use Button Mapper. 
uh, to set up another gesture like a uh, long press on the volume down rocker or um, do the same thing on volume up um, or, or some other similar thing that's more convenient for yourself. The next thing to do is to get rid of blow wear. Um, obviously you can, uh, you can multi-select however many of these that you do not require and you can just uninstall them directly from the home screen but I'm not going to do that because they're not bloatware to me but you can do that and then you're going to have to go to settings on your um, on your home screen and then disable the uh, you have to go to more first and then disable the uh, search and replace it with notification shade and control center if that's what you want of course to get this instead of the um, instead of the, the search bar the Chinese search screen that you do not like probably and if you don't like the app vault right here either, again, I use it, so I have it enabled. Um, there's no way to replace it with Google Feed, but you can, of course, go to home screen settings from here and then disable app vault from right here. Or you can customize it. You can disable some of them and leave the rest of them enabled. And then as for the uh, AI assistant, you can, of course, disable all the ways to wake it as well. You can disable wake with power button and you can disable wake with voice. You can disable everything, uh, including the uh, hold the navigation bar gesture thingy. So as you can see, nothing happens when I do this. So if you absolutely don't want to use the, uh, if you don't want to use Xiaomi's AI, then you can disable all the ways to wake it up. Now, the only important thing left there to talk about is, of course, whether or not you will be able to use this phone in your country. It's actually very easy to find out. All you got to do is head over to this website. I'm not sure what it's called, though, Keymobile or Kimobile or whatever. But um, you can do this, and then you, you're going to have to go to cell phones, find Xiaomi's latest right here, the Pro Max. And then you're going to have to choose your country. So, for example, if you live in the U.S., you do this, and then you figure out which bands. Uh, now, the, the way this works is the more of these bands that your country covers, um, the better coverage you're going to get. So in terms of 4G coverage, as you can see, it's almost perfect in the U.S. Most of the bands are covered by all the carriers. Again, almost. It's not 100% perfect. Um, now, for example, this with Cricut Wireless, this does not mean that you're not going to be able to use it at all. It only means that in some areas in the country, there may be some parts where you're not going to get the full coverage. And it's going to be stricter with 5G, as you can see. So it depends a lot on your carrier. But then again, with most carriers, unfortunately, 5G coverage is not going to be the best for the Xiaomi 17 Pro Max. It's, it's better with C Spire, Verizon, and US Cellular, um, GCI as well. But it's not going to be the best with T-Mobile. Or if you live in a different country, for instance, in the UK, let's do this again. So you're going to have to look up the name of your country and then look at all these results. Obviously, it's a lot better. It's, it's near perfect. Actually, it's better with 5G than it is with 4G. But yeah, as you can see, it's, it's perfect. All the carriers in the UK are covering all the bands supported by the Xiaomi 17 Pro Max. So you're going to be able to use um, full 5G network coverage in the UK. And if for some reason or the other, your country is not included on this website, um, you can go to Xiaomi's official website to get their list of covered bands. It's right here. I have it right here. Um, so this is a full list, obviously, of all the, uh, um, all, all the bands, including 4G and 5G and 3G, even, even 2G. So uh, you, can, you can look at these and then you can compare them with uh, the ones that are supported by your carrier back home. And then that's basically about it. There's nothing else that I can think of that you're gonna need to do. However, there's still some things to consider. So for instance, Google Wallet, as for the app itself, it does work normally. However, it depends a lot on your bank. So some banks, for some reason, will not allow you to add your card in um, to, uh, to Google Wallet on a Chinese ROM. But the app is working and it does work normally as it should with some banks, but then with some other banks, it will not work and um, I don't think there's a way to find out whether or not your bank is supported um, except actually trying it out on the phone. And of course, with Xiaomi's Hyper OS 3, you are not going to get Android Auto, Google Timeline, and voice activation for your Google Assistant. But then that's it. You have full access to the Play Store. You can download all your global apps and games, and then there's no restriction in using any of those whatsoever. All right, until the next one, peace out.